Hello, hello, and thank you for joining us. This is AdAge Remotely. I'm Mike Chuang, ad tech reporter at AdAge. Cloud software giant Salesforce is still generating buzzworthy headlines despite the pandemic. Headlines like its deal to buy office messaging Slack app Slack for $27.7 billion. Salesforce also reimagined, reimagined its annual developer conference, Dreamforce, into an online only show. And at a time when issues regarding DNI and women in the workforce are generating change around the globe, one headline that made waves in advertising. Longtime Salesforce veteran Sarah Franklin was promoted to chief marketing officer in January at the tech company. Franklin most recently served as executive VP and general manager, platform and app exchange at Salesforce, and led the team that launched Salesforce's STEM learning platform Trailhead. Joining us now to discuss Dreamforce, Salesforce, and women in marketing leadership, Sarah Franklin, President and Chief Marketing Officer at Salesforce. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Mike. Thank you so much for having me here today. Lovely to be here. Thank you. Thank you. So before we get started, a note to our viewers watching at home. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them on our social channels. We will get them into this conversation. So Sarah, of course, I do want to start with congratulating you on your still fresh promotion at Salesforce. And of course, every C-suite executive wants to make their mark on the company. What's, what's your vision for marketing at Salesforce in your new role? Thank you so much for the kind words. And I'm, I'm humbled and honored to be um, president and CMO at Salesforce. Um, and I have never been more excited about the opportunity that we have in marketing. Uh, to be innovating, to be growing the company, and to be really leading in the industry um, at a time when everybody's wondering, like, how do we market? How do we get back to growth? And I'm so excited to be doing that here at Salesforce. Interesting. Okay. So I've spoken to some analysts who are tracking Salesforce and they say they've had a bit of sort of trouble pinning down exactly what the company does, a perception that has sort of shaped the public image of the company. So how will the company's marketing help address this image? So Salesforce is an incredible company which is grounded in our values, trust, customer success, innovation, and equality. And we have a very simple mission, which is to bring companies and customers together, whether it's helping them to sell, to service their customers, to market their customers, have commerce, build applications, have everything they need for their customers, employees, and partners to be successful. And bringing that message to market um, is so exciting. And for our marketing, I'm so excited to be able to reinvent a lot of the tactics that used to be um, very different type of tactics in, in the old world, which was just a year ago, right? And in this new world, we're doing broadcast like we're doing right now. I'm in my home like I am right now. And we're also doing things um, to experiment with different formats. Um, I just finished watching uh, our CEO and chairman, Mark Benioff, and our COO, Brett Taylor, do a live event from Washington, DC, right before this with an in-person studio audience. Um, but if they were outside, it was raining torrential downpour. And, but that's the reality is that we need to be successful from anywhere. We need to roll with what's given to us, make the best with everything we can. And that's our job in marketing is to, to reinvent and, and do different things. So Salesforce as a customer success company, that's what we're doing with our marketing. Interesting. Okay. So Sarah, can you draw back the curtain a little bit and sort of give us a preview of what you have, uh, what you have planned and, uh, uh, what are the innovations that you are going to uh, come out with on the marketing team? Yes. So, Mike, we have some incredible things planned at Salesforce with our marketing. I mentioned we just uh, just had an event right before this um, broadcast here. But we're coming off of our Dreamforce, which was in um, the end of last year, which was an incredible event that used to be it used to be 170,000, which was a lot of people in San Francisco. But we just did that completely reinvented for digital. And we were able to have over 140 million viewers online. We transformed the medium, we transformed the content, and we had incredible reach and it was so much more inclusive. 
And we're taking that on the road now. We're broadcasting from surprise locations around the world. We were in Singapore, today we're in DC. Next month we'll be in another place and we're gonna keep going. And we're gonna keep having that engagement with our customers and, our, and, and connecting with everybody around the world. And, and we're doing it safely. Uh, there's a lot of things different that we have to do. We need to do um, COVID testing. We need to practice social distancing. We need to wear masks. We need to do all of these things. And, and that's what we're doing. And Salesforce is so excited. And I'm so excited for our marketing to be leading the way um, in the industry for how we do this. Uh, the, the way we're going to market too is on multiple channels, uh, whether it's on YouTube or Twitter or on our own channels. We are going out there doing audio, doing video, doing all of these digital formats, which is so, so, so powerful. And we're bringing together the best of everything, the best of digital, the best of in-person, the best of everything we've learned. And that is the future of Salesforce marketing. As we have Dreamforce going into our Success Anywhere tour, and then how we are able to also connect with our community and, and meet with them, and they're meeting together themselves um, it's just an incredible time to be doing marketing. So Sarah, thank you very much for that. Uh, I do want to expand on that, uh, keeping kind of with the theme of virtual events. Uh, obviously we're in one right now in a sort of meta sort of way. Uh, we're still stuck at home due to the pandemic and that means virtual events like Dreamforce to you are still the best and often the only way uh, to connect with uh, everyone from clients to subscribers, everyone in between. What are some of the challenges that Salesforce faced with holding Dreamforce until last year it was a completely live event and now it's all online? And how did you overcome these challenges? Yeah, so with every, um, with every crisis, there's opportunity, right? Uh, we, the, the glass is half full. And that is what we're doing here at Salesforce. And when Dreamforce came around, we're like, how can we use this as an opportunity to innovate? And by making it digital, it made it so people didn't have to buy an expensive ticket, fly around the world, take time off from their families. They were able to experience Dreamforce from their own home. And we made personalized content and personalized engagement for people to be able to have that very special experience, to bring Dreamforce to them, to their living rooms, to their kitchens, uh, to wherever they were in the world. And that meant that we went from you know, 170,000, know, from thousands to millions, 140 million people able to, to view and participate in Dreamforce. And so every challenge we met, which was, okay, how do we connect with people? We, we said, well, we need to do personalized engagement. We need to know what they're interested in and, and give them personal content, which is about what their questions are, which is answering their questions and helping them with the things that they're trying to solve. And we showed up, you know, with our technology, with our solutions, and we completely revolutionized our content. People aren't going to sit around for, you know, multi-hour keynote. They want bite-sized content that they can, you know, absorb very quickly. And so every challenge we looked at as an opportunity to innovate, um, to better connect with our customers. Sarah, thank you. So uh, I do want to keep uh, I, I do want to kind of keep our audience in the loop. So I'm going to do some uh, shout outs. Shout outs here to Alan, uh, Robert, uh, Evgenia, Molly, Badir, Thania, Ashley, and Eduarda. And of course, apologies if I am botching any of these names. Uh, once again, I am Mike Chuang at AdAge, and with me today is Sarah Franklin, President and Chief Marketing Officer at Salesforce. So Sarah, kind of continuing on to uh, what you were saying earlier. Uh, one of the problems is with, with, with these types of events is obviously keeping audiences engaged and entertained and active in, in these live events. They're, it's difficult. So what solutions did Salesforce come up with to overcome this type of inertia? Yes, there are so many changes that we, we had to go through. So we had to revolutionize our content, revolutionize and evolve our mediums that we go. And also it's really important that we're grounded in our values and that we look for how we as a brand, as a company are having impact in the world and that we're standing for good together with our communities and helping our customers and communities. And we had to innovate, not just with our products, but also with our perspectives. 
and shift from you know, billboards to broadcasts and from presentations to original series that are broadcast live from surprise locations, go from product launches to pilot seasons. Um, those are some of the, the, the changes that we went through. And, and our brand really mattering and standing for something which, was, which is important and substantive and real and grounding ourselves in trust and standing behind equality and standing behind um, helping others. And so those are some of the big changes that we had to make um, in our content and whether it's changing formats from in-person to digital to also audio is a big thing now too. And, and slicing and dicing your content in different ways that is, that is natural for different audiences. So those are some of the things that we've done and um, it's been really successful because we've had so much more engagement with, with our brand and with our content and with everything that we do. And it's been um, a really powerful time. So Sarah, Salesforce, of course, is facing some tough competition from other cloud software players out there like Microsoft and Oracle. Uh, how will your marketing communicate what sets Salesforce apart from its competitors? Salesforce is grounded in our values, trust, customer success, innovation, equality. There's, there's nothing more important than the trust of our customers, the trust of our community, and the success of our customers. And that they can be successful from, from anywhere, uh, whether they're selling from anywhere, helping their customers with their, their great service from anywhere, marketing from anywhere. And Salesforce is so special to always put our customer first. The customer is at the center of everything we do. And also we have something very special, which is our trailblazers. And these are people that are living and breathing Salesforce every day, millions, like over 11 million trailblazers, which have built a career on Salesforce. And they are so successful and we sing their songs. We, we, we elevate them because their success is, is so important. And that is a key differentiation with Salesforce is that we put our customer at the center, trust is our number one value, and we tell our story through the lens of our customers. And I was just watching you know, Mark Benioff, our CEO and, and chairman, uh, talk about two incredible customers like um, in New York City, how they're, you know, administering vaccines to all of their um, citizens and Honeywell, how they're able to sell from anywhere and, and really just this incredible company, keep it growing. Um, that customer success for companies, small, large, any industry, any location, that is very special and unique to Salesforce. So Sarah, speaking of selling from anywhere and speaking of course of corporate differentiation as well, uh, we're looking to the future. Vaccines seem to be rolling out and hope it seems to be just on the horizon for once in, uh, in about a year's time. Uh, people might be getting back together in real life. So how will Dreamforce adopt to this transition? Will it be a hybridized model? Will it stick to one format over the other? Well, Mike, we're, we're already doing this. We just had um, our Success Anywhere tour, uh, which Mark was just in Washington, D.C. Uh, with Trailblazers in the audience live broadcast. And we are, we are learning, we are doing the best with what we can in today's world. And we are using testing, using social distancing, using mask wearing so that we can have safe gatherings. So yes, we are going forward into this new world together. And we are going to bring the best of digital, the best of in-person and, and the best of both of them together so that it can be a hybrid experience, but not just in one place, there can be multiple places where things are happening at the same time. It's the magic of, of digital is that we can, we can see each other even if we're not in the same rooms together. And so it's, I am so excited for Dreamforce and all of you, um, we're going to be on the road to Dreamforce with our Success Anywhere tour um, as we build towards this crescendo of, of incredible gathering of our family, like a family reunion around the world, bringing together the, both, the best of you know, both the digital and the, um, the in-person. 
Thank you. So for those of us just joining us, uh, my name is Mike Duong at AdAge, and of course with me is Sarah Franklin of Salesforce. Uh, so let's change gears a little bit and talk about a sort of very distinct part of Salesforce, uh, the Salesforce trailhead, and your work in STEM as it relates to diversity and inclusion. So you've been key in launching Salesforce's trailhead in 2014. Uh, as you can see, it aims to make tech expertise more accessible to those keen on a career change. So what's your next what's your next big idea following this? What steps are you taking to make STEM more inclusive? Uh, yes, yeah, so so thank you for bringing this up because um, Trailhead is our free online learning platform. And just as Salesforce started with a very simple idea, which is, you know, why isn't software as easy as it is to use Amazon uh, back in 1999? Uh, we had the same question. We said, you know, why can't learning tech skills be as you know fun and easy as you know, playing a game online? And there's so much opportunity in the Salesforce ecosystem, millions of jobs, trillions of GDP impact, all amazing opportunity. And this is in a field where a personal passion of mine is that um, there's just not enough representation uh, uh, in tech for, for whether it's you know, by gender, by race, by, by any way that you want to look at the data. The tech industry is not representative of our population. And as a female in tech, um, I want to skill people up into, you know, learn the skills of the future, be able to get these incredible, lucrative, um, very, um, you know, creative, wonderful opportunities and careers. And so, so that's when we did was we created Trailhead and it has just gone, you know, through the roof. We have millions of people learning uh, Salesforce skills and getting incredible jobs in our ecosystem. And we are doing so much to help everyone learn these skills. And whether it's supporting the black community, the, the, um, the women, our women, any underrepresented minority, uh, we want everybody to feel safe and to feel included and to feel welcome. And we do that by elevating people that have been successful. So you can see yourself in the future. You can see a woman, you can see a representative of the black community, you can see yourself in the trailblazers because it is the most diverse and inclusive and welcoming community. So for advancing STEM, as a mother of two daughters myself, you know, I want them to feel that they can see themselves in the future. They can see themselves in this economic opportunity and they will pursue those dreams. And we want to make it free and easy. And that's why we have Trailhead. So, Sarah, thank you. Uh, I'm kind of thinking uh, also about uh, d and internally. How is that going to be reflected in, in Salesforce's marketing? How are you going to achieve uh, diversity and inclusion from within uh, within Salesforce, and how will you sort of promote that so the outside world can see this as an example? So diversity and inclusion and 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 everything is is so important, and it is again back to Salesforce's core values. You know, equality is one of our core values, and for ever since we you know been a company, this has been core to us. And you can rewind uh, to see the efforts that Mark um, did with equal pay, making sure that everybody is you know, paid equally for equal work at our company and advocating for that, um, advocating for, um, for the rights of everyone, whether it's the LGBTQ community and work that is done there. And, and most recently, making sure that we stand up um, as, uh, as active allies um, and that we do not tolerate racism, hatred, uh, violence, injustice. And we try to um, make it um, easy for people to learn and understand how they can, can um, understand their, their biases and how we fight systemic uh, bias, whether it's conscious or unconscious. And at Salesforce, we have our, our racial equality and justice task force, which is specifically focused on these items. And whether it's in our people, whether it's in our products, whether it's in our philanthropy or our purchasing, that we look at all of our processes and make sure that we are doing them um, equally. And then also, I mentioned in our ecosystem, uh, there is incredible economic opportunity in the Salesforce ecosystem, millions of jobs, trillions of GDP impact. And by 
elevating people into those jobs, we can provide economic opportunity, which is the single most impactful thing for helping to um, to change the way things are. And uh, a dream of mine is to change the ratios in tech. Got it. And speaking of these inner workings of Salesforce, Evgenia in LinkedIn asks you, Sarah, what are your main areas of focus when just starting in the CMO position? What do you prioritize? Um, it's a great question. As Evan, Evgenia, I don't know if I'm saying your name correctly, but thank you so much for the question. And as a, as a CMO, um, I'm two months in the role, but 13 years at Salesforce. It's a priority for me this year to, to balance ourselves in market, to make sure that we are showing up every day, uh, not just talking about our products, but also our values, that we build trust with our community and that we help people understand our products and that we show up every day being our best. And so when I look at our priorities right now, I'm looking at our portfolio, making sure that we are delivering a consistent message and that we are doing it to consistently build trust and consistently show up with our whole tapestry of Salesforce offerings, whether it's our products, our perspectives, and bringing all of our values um, into everything we do and in our ecosystem and making sure ultimately that our customers are successful. Thank you for that. So I want to broaden the outlook here with the remaining time that we have. Uh, and let's talk about uh, sort of the wider scale of uh, marketing in general. How has the pandemic reshaped marketing? So that is a big question um, because the pandemic has definitely reshaped marketing when a lot of, um, especially at Salesforce, I mean, we're known for these big events these big, incredible events. Dreamforce was 170,000 people that would descend upon San Francisco. And, and it was a huge focus for us, took a whole year to plan. And so you have to shift from, you know, thinking about billboards and in, uh, in, in huge events to thinking about more distributed digital content that is bite-sized, snackable, that can be put on multiple channels and that elevates your brand and builds trust. Those are so important because it's people's, you know, you're, you're competing for attention right now and you're competing for people's, you know, mind share during a time that, you know, I'm a mother of two daughters. I know many of you probably have, you know, family, children, neighbors, loved ones, all, a bunch of complexity in your world right now that you just need a simple way of being in your work life. And we all are just trying to figure out how are we gonna get through this? Um, and now there's so much positivity on the horizon with vaccines coming and uh, with us being able to understand right practices with social distancing, mask wearing, except testing, et cetera. So, you know, our events and our marketing has fundamentally changed and we're not going back to the way it used to be because we are going to be in this new world where we are bringing the best of all of these things together between digital and in-person and between um, taking our content down to more you know, snackable, bite-sized, digitally optimized type of content. And even the way people buy is different, whether it's you know buy online, pick up in store, whether they're watching a show and just clicking to buy right there from, from, the, um, from the experience or the broadcast, or whether they're having an experienced store. Uh, the, the whole retail or the, the, the store experience is different because you might go to a store to just experience a product. And so how you market that product is very different as well. So, so marketing has fundamentally changed, but I'm excited. And, and we're not even yet getting into the future, which could be with, with VR and AR and tons of incredible experiences with augmented reality and being able to put people into virtual spaces. And you think of swag and, and brand affiliation and how you can have avatars and the opportunity for people to interact with you and, and gain reputation, have a sense of community. These are all incredible things, which are so much more um, uh, possible now when we have digital elevated uh, within everything we're doing with our marketing and our events. 
And Sarah, what are some of those trends that we're seeing in retail? I thought you might uh, be a great person to ask this question because uh, obviously Salesforce, a lot of the software does deal in, in, in that retail sector. So what are some of the trends that we're seeing in retail? Yeah, so I mentioned a few of them in retail, you know, with our commerce cloud, customers are saying they want to buy online, pick up in store. They want to schedule visits to the store. Um, just things that you had didn't think about before. Now you need to think about understanding what are the safety protocols if you do go uh, to a store. Um, but if you're experiencing online, you have brands that are going digital first, digital only. And so for retail, that means that you need to provide that same feeling to be able to see a product, understand the product, place it in your room, do all of that, make the buying experience very easy. And uh, that's why I'm so proud that we have our commerce cloud, which uh, enables brands of all sizes, all locations, all industries um, to be able to go digital fast and scale with confidence, um, knowing that the data that they're using is, is secure and, and protected and that customers have that trust um, as data privacy um, regulations get more and data governance gets harder and all of the, the changes that we have um, happening with, with data, it's so important that um, as marketers that you are able to, that you know that you're standing your solutions up on a software and technology that um, securely handles all that data. So there's a lot of changes, whether it's from all the data that's coming in from digital or that you just need to go digital um, and all of the compliance and regulatory and government things that you have to pay attention to. There's a lot of changes, but um, it's, it's, it's a new world for sure. And Sarah, uh, so I, I'm sure you have some personal experience in this at this point, but uh, how we work in a post COVID world will be drastically different from what it was like pre-pandemic, during the pandemic. So in terms of your role, how has the role of CMO changed? So yeah, it's it's the role of CMO, every role has changed, whether you're a CMO, a CEO, a CIO, a CTO, um, every role has changed. Uh, salespeople are most likely not you know, gonna be doing as much traveling. You can do a lot digitally. Uh, we just had an event I mentioned just right before this, which you know my CEO, Mark Benioff, was in Washington, D.C., and I'm in California watching everything and doing, um, we're, we're, we're saying which cameras to feed to, looking at the shots, doing on-site you know, tech check-ins and everything, and doing that all remotely, which is incredible. I could not have a year ago imagined having an event with my CEO and being not in the room with him, that just like blows my mind, but we can do that now. And it provides us a lot of scale opportunities. It means that, okay, we were able to have that event and I was able to just click over and now be right here with everyone here in AdAge, which is incredible. And that velocity of being able to be present, be available, be on, be accessible, and be accessible globally around the world, that, is just fundamentally different. And it is so exciting because it, it gives us the opportunity to be more inclusive, to, to get our messages out to more people, to listen to more people, which ultimately makes us, us better because we get more perspectives and it makes us able to grow um, more as a brand, as a company, because we have more reach and we get a wider, more diverse, more inclusive audience. Sarah, thank you so much for those insights and for sharing all of this with us today. Sarah Franklin, President and Chief Marketing Officer at Salesforce, thank you so much for joining us. Before we wrap, a quick thank you to our AdAge crew, Alfred Mascaroni, Anna Sekula, Max Sternlicht, and Elise Liffering. And if you want more, we'll be talking more about retail on April 20th at AdAge Next Retail. For more details, you can go to adage.com forward slash next retail. And thank you so much to our audience here for joining us today on this session. My name is Mike Chuang, and this is Ad Age Remotely. <laughs>